Think back to unit two. Do you remember the name of the monomer of nucleic acids? Hmm, let me see. Is that the nucleotide? Its components are C-H-O-N-P, correct? Yeah, exactly. Well, this module looks at the structure and function of the nucleic acid called DNA, which is made up of a bunch of nucleotides. Wait, what does DNA stand for? DNA is the abbreviation for deoxyribonucleic acid. Do you also remember the shape of the nucleotide? Isn't it look like a dinosaur or maybe a chicken? Yeah. A nucleotide is a complex monomer that includes the sugar deoxyribose, which is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, a nitrogenous base made of nitrogen, and a phosphate group containing phosphorus. So when we link those up, um, all the nucleotides, we get the double helix shape of DNA, like this? Exactly. The DNA biomolecule looks like a winding staircase or a twisted ladder, which we refer to as a double helix. Got it. DNA is a double helix or a twisted ladder, just like this one. Now, in a DNA molecule, there are four different types of nucleotides. In all four nucleotides, the phosphates and the sugars are identical, but the nitrogenous bases are different. So, what are the four nitrogenous bases? The four bases are adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. Did you know that the order of these four bases contains a code, and this is the code that determines our inherited traits? Is that why DNA is called the genetic code or the blueprint of life? So then, the function of DNA that makes up our genes is to give instructions for our characteristics. You've got it. The genetic code is common to all organisms, from the tiniest bacterial cells to the largest blue well. I need to tell you some more about how these bases pair up. The four bases belong to two groups, the purines and the pyrimidines. Purines have double rings and are adenine and guanine, while pyrimidines have single rings and are cytosine and thymine. One purine always bonds with a pyrimidine. Guanine and adenine are purines, and thymine and cytosine are pyrimidines. A purine always pairs with a pyrimidine, so there are rules for how these bases pair with each other? Yeah. These bases pair up across from each other, making two strands of the double helix. Adenine pairs with thymine. A way to remember that is apples grow on trees. A pairs with T. Cytosine pairs with guanine. A way to remember that is cars use gas. C pairs with G. Wow, so A links to T because apples are on trees and C links to G because cars use gas. Does it work the other way around? Yes, the rules work in reverse as well. So T will link with A and G will link with C. The sequence of one strand determines the sequence of the complementary or matching strand. We can figure out the matches using the base pairing rules. Is there a special bond that links the bases together? Yeah, hydrogen bonds link the nitrogenous bases between the two DNA strands. Three hydrogen bonds, or a triple bond, will link guanine and cytosine, while two hydrogen bonds, or a double bond, link thymine and adenine. So the bases are linked together by a hydrogen bond. Is this like this in all the organisms? Yes, like I mentioned before, the genetic code is common to all organisms. I wanted to tell you about the sides of the double helix. They are described as anti-parallel. Anti-parallel? What does that mean? Well, one DNA strand is upside down compared to the other one. Oh, I see. So, who discovered all of this information? Well, in 1952, a female scientist named Rosalind Franklin took x-ray pictures of DNA. So a woman was the first one. One year later, two scientists named Watson and Crick used Franklin's pictures to help them discover the structure of DNA is in fact a double helix. Okay, so Franklin, Watson, and Crick get the credit for discovering DNA and its structure. I bet that was big news when that happened. Didn't they get like the Nobel Prize or something for their discovery? Yes, they did. Franklin died before the prize was awarded, so she didn't get the publicity she deserved, but the others did. The end. Remember, the monomer of nucleic acids looks like this. It has a phosphate, a base, and a deoxyribose sugar. Notice the dinosaur shape. Here you see a short strand of DNA, and across from it is its base pairing. Remember, apples grow on trees, and cars use gas. 
So across from each other, you have um, a, a and a T, and G and a C, etc., uh, and they pair and match that way. This picture shows the anti-parallel word we talked about earlier. This side compared to this side are upside down to each other. Uh, notice the bases in the center, double bonds, triple bonds, and we said earlier that purines, one purine and one pyrimidine, uh, bond with each other in the center. Remember these are hydrogen bonds that hold the two sides of the DNA molecule together. This cell is a eukaryotic cell. The DNA is confined to the nucleus. Here in this diagram the DNA is strung out and you can see the twisted ladder shape. Notice the sugar phosphate backbone and the bases in the center. The bases are joined together by weak hydrogen bonds. The order of the bases makes up the genetic code.